the sea, North Sea and Baltic Sea, full of life. Mighty, matchless, bountiful, congenial, and sometimes to be trusted. Then again, fascinating and unexpectedly beautiful. Impressively rich in forms and colors. Mysterious and largely unknown. Come with us on a voyage through the marine protected areas far from the shores of the North Sea and Baltic Sea. In the open sea, Outside of Germany's 12 nautical mile wild exclusive economical zone, the EEZ, such as here in the North Sea area, the German Federal Agency for Nature Conservation began a comprehensive research program already in the late 1990s. Dive in and discover with us the biological diversity in these marine worlds. Using underwater cameras, scientists study endangered habitats such as sandbanks and reefs with their associated species communities. Fisheries biologists carry out regular surveys in the North Sea and Baltic Sea. The results yield information about the species composition and the occurrence of spawning or juvenile fish. With side-looking sonar, the researchers use acoustics to depict the characteristics of the sea bottom. The pattern of reflected sound waves and the resulting grayscale picture give marine geologists information about the sediment composition, such as mud, sand, gravel, or stones, and about structures such as boulders or large sand ripples. The small harbour porpoises in the Baltic Sea are highly endangered. One method used by biologists to register their occurrence is by recording their vocalizations, clicking sounds, with the help of stationary underwater microphones fitted with click detectors. A research team conducts regular aerial surveys. The biologists count the numbers of these marine mammals along preset routes in the North Sea and Baltic Sea. With the help of correction factors, the total numbers and distributions of harbour porpoises, which are still common in the North Sea, can then be modelled. Areas of high concentrations and the distribution of mother calf pairs, as adhere at the outer reef of the island of Silt, as well as seasonal variations, can be recognised. Research on bottom life, the benthos, is also carried out in one of the 25 sub-projects. Using a bottom grab, marine biologists collect sand samples, determine the grain size, and study the species composition, for example, of the tiny interstitial fauna, an important building block in the marine food web. The research results have revealed areas in the EEZ which are particularly in need of protection. With the Fauna Flora Habitat Directive, the EU member states committed themselves in 1992 to creating a coherent network of protected areas, also in the sea. Together with the area designations, according to the European Conservation of Wild Birds Directive, these form the system of marine protected areas Natura 2000 for the conservation of diversity of species and habitats. It first became possible to protect marine areas with outstanding ecological significance after the revision of the Federal Nature Protection Law in 2002. 
In the meantime, Germany has set standards in Europe with regard to the speed and extent of designating protected areas. Germany has designated four marine protective areas in the North Sea. The bird protection area in the Eastern German Bight, hatched green here, as well as the yellow shaded FFH areas of the Sylt Outer Reef, the Borkum Reef Ground and the Dogger Bank, all of which have been recognized as sites of community interest in the EU. The Outer Reef at Sylt, with its high biodiversity, is, for example, characterized by densely overgrown boulders along the residual glacial valley of the Elbe River, alternating with extensive sandbanks such as the Amrum Bank. The biodiversity in this protected area is prodigious. Sponges, anemones and hornrack, dead man's fingers, sea squirts and urchins, are among the typical representatives of the epifauna in the reef areas. This region is particularly rich in fish, an ideal food resource for many other species. Seabirds such as common guillemot and razorbill are among the beneficiaries of this. They spend most of the year hunting in the open sea and are only to be found near the coast during the breeding season, for example, on Heligoland. Protected areas, such as the area around the offshore island of Heligoland, with their remarkable underwater fauna and impressive kelp forests, serve as habitats for a multitude of further species. This region also belongs to the Natura 2000 system of protected areas and has an important interconnecting function particularly between the bird sanctuary in the Eastern German Bight, where black and red-throated divers find ideal conditions for overwintering. Germany has a special responsibility for these rare seabirds, which overwinter here in internationally significant numbers. Grey and harbour seals have important feeding and breeding grounds in this region. The importance of interconnected protected areas in the open sea and at the coast, for example with the designation of the Wadden Sea National Park along the entire North Sea coast, can be demonstrated by looking at behavioural patterns of seals. They need protected, undisturbed sandbanks and beaches on the coasts while whelping and suckling their young. An excellent network of protected areas upon which seabirds also depend during breeding, migration and molting. The German protected area Dogger Bank covers only a part of the largest sandbank in the North Sea. The Dogger Bank itself has a total extent of 18,000 square kilometers. The high productivity and the resultant large amounts of plankton and other small organisms provide for the rich fish stocks in this area. The Dogger Bank thus plays a central role in the North Sea ecosystem. It affords a habitat for a multitude of species, from the small and inconspicuous bivalves and snails, for example the European necklace shell, to the huge, fascinating species, like the basking shark. This plankton feeder is on the red list, it is strictly protected internationally according to the Washington Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. The Dogger Bank lies within the exclusive economical zones of Germany, United Kingdom, Netherlands and Denmark. There is shared international responsibility for this sandbank, as well as for the entire diversity of life in the North Sea and Baltic Sea which is exercised within the framework of the OSPA and Helsinki Conventions. In establishing a network of marine protected areas in the Northeast Atlantic and the Baltic Sea by the year 2010, Germany takes a leading role. The use of the seas, for example, as sites for offshore wind farms or for the extraction of sand and gravel, requires national concepts and harmonized management measures. International rules and regulations are necessary 
especially for fisheries and shipping in sensitive areas, as only these ensure an equitable way to achieve sustainable use based on an ecosystem approach. In the German EEZ of the Baltic Sea, six Natura 2000 sites with outstanding ecological significance have been designated. The densely populated boulders of the Western Runner Bank, the mussel banks of the Adler Ground, the extensive sandy bottoms of the Odra Bank, the areas Cadet Channel and the Feynman Belt, narrows which ensure genetic exchange with the inner Baltic Sea, and the bird protection area Pomeranian Bay, with its numerous overwintering guests, hatched green here. 70% of the total water exchange between the Belt Sea and the Inner Baltic Sea pass through the Cadet Channel and Feynman Belt, essential for the oxygen and salinity concentrations, and thus for the ecological processes in the Baltic Sea. Harbour porpoises utilise the Feynman Belt during their migrations, and presumably also as a feeding area. The occurrence of sensitive and long-living species is a sign of continuously good environmental conditions. At their most eastern distribution in the Cadet Channel Marine Protected Area, anemones are tiny. At greater depths, there are still red and brown algae growing, such as sea belt, which form intricate communities together with large mussels. Further east of the Adler Ground, the large algae become rare, and the rocks and parts of the sandy areas are densely covered with small blue mussels. Long-tailed ducks, for example, utilize this rich food source. Regular counts show that here and in the surrounding protected areas, around 40% of the entire North European population of long-tailed ducks are to be found in some winter months. Every year, the bird protection area in the Pomeranian Bay offers several tens of thousands of long-tailed ducks, as well as common and velvet scoters, ice-free resting areas, and a sufficient and continuous food supply making it a key area for endangered seabirds in winter. The sandy Odra bank is an ideal feeding ground for juvenile fish and for various migrating species, such as the Atlantic sturgeon, which was until recently in danger of extinction. These fish live as adult animals in the sea and migrate up the rivers to spawn. The German Federal Agency for Nature Conservation, together with scientists from various research institutes, has in the meantime been able to reintroduce artificially hatched juveniles of two formerly native sturgeon species into the Odra and Elbe rivers. Sturgeons are considered indicator species for intact environmental conditions, such as good water quality. Their life cycle requires interconnected protected areas in the sea, at the coasts and in the river areas, as advanced within the framework of the Natura 2000 network on the German Baltic Sea coast. With the designation of 10 marine protected areas, Germany has contributed significantly to the network of marine protected areas in the Northeast Atlantic and the Baltic Sea. Germany is also playing a strong role in the international process towards designating a worldwide network of protected areas in the high seas by 2012 and in the development of global strategies for protecting the marine environment. This is essential because only international cooperation and the worldwide protection of sensitive marine areas can guarantee the conservation of marine biodiversity and with this contribute to the protection of essential resources for humans. An important step in this direction would be an equitable and sustainable use of natural resources. Protecting the treasures of the sea for future generations is, and will remain, an important challenge. <laughs> <laughs>